Okay, today is day whatever it is in the 12 week year. I lost count, uh, not even close to having any idea. Um, and I guess it doesn't matter. Uh, if you have the book at home and you want to follow along, I'm on page 127, chapter 17, and we're going to talk about taking back control of your day, all right? In other words, we're going to talk a little bit about time management, time blocking, 80-20 um, rule, uh, four quadrants from Stephen R. Covey's book, uh, Seven Habits of Highly Effective People, and we're going to get into a conversation on how you can be more productive by simply... Uh, paying attention uh, to how you are investing your time or spending your time or wasting your time. Three very different things, right? All right. So middle of the page, 127, I've just got three different, three short lines here. I want to share with you what most often keeps you from being exceptional is not a lack of time, but the way you allocate the time you have. You know, if you ask enough people, what's your biggest challenge? You're going to hear time. I wish I had more time. If there was just more time in the day. <laughs> And, you know, it's interesting because my perspective on that is, well, there is. There is more time in the day. Let's talk about what an average day looks like you for you. Now, what would a great day look like for you? By the way, most people don't know the answer to that question. When you ask most people, how are you doing? What you typically hear is, I'm okay. Right. If, if you're asking them in French, it's uh, comment allez-vous? And what you're going to hear is come see, come saw. Now, don't be impressed because that's all I know. <laughs> I'm so impressed. Right. <laughs> that comes from uh, being married to Monica and having French relatives for 30 years. I know how to say, how are you? And I know how to respond, comment allez-vous? Uh, anyways, onward. Going to page 129. Oh, let me go back for a moment. Take some time and define a perfect day. You, this is something you should do in your journal. Define a perfect day, if nothing else, so that you know when you had a perfect day. So next time somebody says, how are you doing? How was your day? You can respond with, holy cow, it was amazing. It was amazing because you lived your perfect day. All right, page 129, middle of the page. Effective time use can be the difference between mediocre and great performance. Now, you notice he didn't say effective time use can be the difference between mediocre and great performance based on your level of skill or how talented you are. This is a blanket statement that applies to everybody, Jonathan. Everybody, no matter where you are on your level of talent and skill, time use can be the difference between mediocrity and greatness for you, for everyone. The problem is that the world is rife with potential distractions and interruptions that arise nonstop throughout the day. By the way, is that getting better or getting worse? worse. Getting worse, right? Mm -hmm. Since the invention of this thing, it's worse. It is. we have a constant distraction in front of us nonstop. I promise you, even as I'm sitting here speaking with you, and my focus is 100% on you, my phone buzzes, I'm going to look down at it. I'm distracted. It's a habit. It's here. It shouldn't be. It should be in my office, by the way. A study conducted by Eric Horvitz of Microsoft Research found that after being distracted from serious mental tasks, by things like emails or instant messages. The typical Microsoft worker took an average of 15 minutes to get back on their original task. What's the cost of distraction? Hmm. Question you should be asking yourself. 
Bottom of the page, the choices that you make on how you spend your time ultimately create your results in life. All right, page 130. Just a note on how you spend your time. Remember that every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. Every time you say no to something, you're saying yes to something else. So if you're in lead generation, for example, and you say yes to a distraction, you're saying no to your goals. You're saying no to the promises that you've made your children. You're saying no to that future that you've promised yourself. Now, hopefully that's a little bit painful and it's okay, we can fix this. In 2011, page 130, the average American spent 2.8 hours a day watching TV. That's 12% of our lives. And that number does not include the hours spent on the newly available entertainment devices such as smartphones and tablets. Hey, who starts their day? looking at their phone. Be honest with yourself. Who starts their day looking at this thing? Okay, so define looking at. Okay, because... who starts their day sitting down with either your iPhone or your tablet and looking at messages that you received during the night, looking at Facebook, looking at whatever, looking at emails. Now, looking at the Bible doesn't count because that's spiritual time that you've blocked to invest spiritually. That's fine. But who's just looking at this? No, so I'll be honest, I do. Now, one of the things that I do is I pay attention to how much time that is. Prior to paying attention, I had got into a habit where... It was anywhere from 45 minutes to an hour between social media, email, YouTube, going on Google and searching to see who won the baseball game last night, looking to see what news is happening in the NFL, checking National Hockey League scores, looking at the weather, just anything that is kill time. 45 minutes to an hour. So one of the things that I do is I limit myself to 10 minutes. All right. Now I have 10 minutes to grab a cup of coffee before it's go time. Now, this is usually somewhere between 4, 4 and 4.30 in the morning when I wake up. And I have 10 minutes to get a cup of coffee, wake up, kill time, and it's go time. It's a habit, right? Now, I wish I had more time in my day. Am I adding productive time back to my day? Say yes. If it used to be 45 minutes to an hour, let's just say it was an hour and now I've given myself that 10 minute, lim that 10 minute limit. Haven't I added 15 minutes of productive time back to my day? Yes, I have. Yeah, now if there's 365 days in a year, do the math, how many additional hours have I added to my time? And if my productive time is worth $50 an hour, by the way, yours is worth more than that. How much additional potential income have I added to the year? All right, just thoughts. All right, bottom of the page. Eventually, the excessive time we spend maximizing comfort in the moment leads to inevitable delayed cost and unrealized achievements. So in other words, you don't see the cost of doing this immediately, but it creeps. It creeps up on you. It happens slowly, and then it happens suddenly. Now, for anybody who's beating themselves up right now. I'm not talking about eliminating TV from your life, okay? I'm not, I'm not ridiculous. 
I am 100% on board with downtime. And if downtime for you means watching an hour of TV at night, go for it. 100%. What I don't want you to do is to get in the habit of getting home at 6.30, 7 o'clock, turning on the TV, sitting on the couch at 7, and still be sitting there at 11 o'clock at night. Don't want you to do that. Okay. However, watching TV at night before you go to bed, go for it. Right? I do. <laughs> Bottom of the page. To become fit requires discomfort. To earn a significant income requires discomfort. So let's go back to, 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 to get fit requires discomfort. I can join a gym and that does absolutely nothing for me. I can even drive by the gym every day and go, there it is. As I drive by, there it is. And that does absolutely nothing for me. I can go in and walk around and look at the weights. And it does absolutely nothing for me until I actually pick up the weights and start pushing against those weights. And I put myself in discomfort comfort. I push my muscles farther than they want to go, can go, and I cause myself to have discomfort. Until I do that, I'm not going to grow. I can think about going out and door knocking every single day. I can drive by the neighborhood and talk about door knocking. I can have the intention of going out daily and knocking on doors until I actually get out of my car and walk in the heat and sweat as I go from home to home to home, knocking on doors, uh, being uncomfortable, I'm not gonna grow. All right, top of the uh, bottom of the page, to accomplish what you desire will take sacrifice. To accomplish what you desire will take sacrifice. Be willing to do what others won't so you can have what others won't have, can't have. The number one thing you will need to sacrifice is your comfort. To be great, you will need to live with intention that will require you to be clear on what matters most and then to have the courage to say no to the things that distract you. In other words, if you are clear on your vision, and you have the opportunity to get distracted during lead generation, it's going to be easier to say no to that distraction, Desiree, if you're clear on the vision. Because you know if you say yes to that distraction, you're saying no to the vision. I'll go back to the story from Rainmaker when Colin got lost at Disney World, and we were looking for our lost five-year-old son. Can you just imagine Somebody coming up to me as I was searching for my son asking, hey, do you know who won the baseball game last night? Mm -hmm. And me saying, I don't know. Let's stop and look. I'm going to pull up the ESPN on, and we'll just we'll look it up. Yeah. I mean, that's ridiculous. Mm -hmm. Well, I don't think it's any more ridiculous than you saying yes to the distraction in the middle of lead generation. Many people spend significant amounts of time and energy attempting to eliminate their weaknesses. Oh boy, this is important. In general, striving to reduce the weaknesses that limit your results is worthwhile and noble. So it's a good thing. I suck at this and I'm gonna spend some additional time to get better at this. Okay, that's good. On a scale of one to 10, with 10, 10, 10 being mastery and my level of mastery on just pick a subject. My level of mastery is a two or a three. So I'm going to invest a lot of time on that thing that I'm a two or three at. At the very best, I might move the needle to a four or five, maybe a six, maybe a seven. Seven is not mastery. Seven is mediocrity at best. Seven is a low C. Now, here's what he goes on to say. 
Everyone has weaknesses that they need to shore up, be successful. However, a weakness will rarely become a strength if you are not in a role that plays to or magnifies your strengths, you are probably in the wrong role. How many times have you heard me say, I am really, really good, really good at just a couple things. And I'm mediocre at best at everything else. Have you heard me say that? Yes. Have you heard me say that the only reason the Dietz team succeeded at the level that we did, the only reason we were able to build a real estate team that sold more than 100 homes a year is because Monica wouldn't let me do anything else but lead generation and go on listing appointments. It was the only thing that I was good at. I sucked at working with buyers. I sucked at administration. If I was the one that was loading everything into the MLS, there would be dozens of mistakes and people would bring them to my attention and I'd go, oh, okay, I'm too busy focused on getting the next listing. I don't care. Cool. Let's go. I'm the wrong person for that role. Now I could try to get better at that or I could find somebody who is great at that and bring that person into my world. That's why none of you, well, most of you, should be doing any kind of transaction management. You should have a transaction coordinator. Gee whiz, how many times do I gotta say that? In reality, it is the focused, concentrated application of your strengths that will produce your greatest achievements. So find things on a scale of one to 10 that you're a seven at, that you're an eight at, Maria. And then focus on that to make it a 10. If you can find the seven and eights in, in, in your life and you can make those become tens, Jonathan, holy cow, the sky is the limit. I'll give you a great example. So you guys know the name Michael Jordan, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Maybe the greatest basketball player of all time. Mm -hmm. Now I know all you LeBron fans are going, no, 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 LeBron's better. Mm -hmm. Whatever, I don't care. Mm -hmm. And his one thing was basketball, right? Yeah. Yeah. Now, was he good at other things? Yeah, he was. Matter of fact, he was a pretty good baseball player. He was. And he actually attempted to go pro playing baseball. How did he do? Not as good as basketball. Well, not even, didn't, didn't even. No, does it doesn't. Uh, Clarissa. I know. It's it, 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 it's such, I'm a Michael Jordan fan. It, it, not as good as base, basketball. Know, Girl, it wasn't even in the I same know. park. He was the greatest basketball player of all time, and he was a mediocre baseball player. Yeah, he changed the game. Absolutely. All right. He's great. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I think he would agree with me. <laughs> Successful individuals work to their strengths. Truly out, outstanding performers have gone a step further and worked to what they call their unique capability, your superpower. My superpower is people. My superpower is teaching, training, coaching, encouraging, motivating you to live a better life. And that's the only thing I focus on every day. That go time in the morning when I wake up at 4, 4.30 and it's time to go, I'm invested in me to become the best version of me in order to be able to pour into you. I am not trying to learn more about command so that I can understand how to use our technology better. That is not my superpower. You guys get that? All right. Unique capabilities are one or two things. One or two things. Have you heard that before? Yep. You do absolutely the best. All right. You have 24 hours a day, right? Mm -hmm. And
you can get out your calculators if you want. And let's just say your day starts at 5 a.m. <laughs> now, hey, by the way, you want to have some fun? If your day currently starts at 7 a.m. and you're looking for more time, start at 6 a.m. You just added 365 hours a year to your year. Yes or yes? yes? Now, if your productive time is worth $50 an hour, take 365 times 50, and that's the... Cost of time. That is, <laughs> that is the return, yeah. holy cow, that you're getting for that additional 365 hours. All right, so your day starts at 5 a.m. And let's just say your, your day, and, and I'm kind of focusing on personal time and professional time here, but we're not going to get into what time you go to bed and all that other kind of stuff, all right? Let's just say that we're looking at a day that goes from 5 to 7 o'clock. Fair enough. So from 5 a.m. to 7 p.m. Now, you're going to work an average of eight hours a day. And how are you going to invest that eight hours? I'm gonna tell you absolutely you have to, it's not a suggestion, it's a have to invest at least two to three hours a day on lead generation, if not more. Now I can do that by time blocking nine to 12 or eight to 11. Or I can do that by time blocking 10 to 11 and 12 to one and two to three. I wouldn't recommend that, but it's still accomplishing the goal. And the reason I wouldn't recommend it is, well, there's a lot of reasons, is you need to have white time that's blank space in your calendar in order for you to put all of your appointments. So ideally, if you're in lead generation, and I know you're in here from nine to 12, so that doesn't work. If you're in lead generation from 10 to one, and your day is over at five or six o'clock, then you have two to five every day for appointments. Easy enough. Focus on your 20%. And the two things that matter most in your 20% is lead generation and appointments. Check those boxes every day and you're moving the needle. Now there's other things that matter too, but those are the things that matter most. And if you want to get a pretty good idea of what your day looks like, grab a spiral notebook for the next 30 days and just write down in 30 minute blocks, what you did that day. And then go back and look to see what you did. Now be honest, if you got distracted and looked at social media for a half hour in the middle of the day, write it down. If you got into a conversation with a friend at work for 15 minutes about what somebody else is wearing that day, write it down. <laughs> you're not going to be able to make improvements if you're not honest with yourself. And most of you don't know. How do I know that? Because you're like me. All right, talk to me, what'd you hear? John? Yes. 